Hey y'all, it's Miss Welch. I had a few questions over the Unit 1 review activity, so I thought I'd make a quick video to help you out with some points and tips for how to get started. So these review activities are going to have you incorporate what you've learned over multiple chapters into one assignment. So a lot of times it will be using the vocabulary and the topics from those three chapters and integrating them in some way to show that you understood the material rather than just a multiple choice type answer. So everyone's project is going to look very different. There's uh, a lot of ways to complete it. So you can be a little creative. And if you have any questions about your format or your project, then let me know. I'd be happy to glance at a first draft or even just a rough uh, idea uh, so that you know if you're on the right track. So unit one review project uh, starts out with an idea that you are a scientist and you have figured out how to fix DNA mutations. So remember what you learned about DNA in chapter two, right? DNA is made of nucleotides and there are disorders where those nucleotides are incorrect. There's something wrong with them. And in sickle cell, that is a real life example where in all of your DNA, only one nucleotide is messed up. Now all of the DNA in every single cell, right? Um, so it'd be like your textbook having an error on page 394. You know, everybody's textbook would have that same spelling error. Um, but if we could fix it right, then the textbooks would be correct. And it's the same thing with your DNA. If we could fix that one nucleotide in every cell, then sickle cell would be cured. Now, we can't do that yet. We don't have gene therapy yet that can fix every single cell in your body. But this is what your scientist team has discovered is how to do that. However, you have to do it by hand. So we're going back to that idea of shrinking down and going into the body and having to fix something manually. So thank you. You might have seen that magic uh, school bus with this frizzle. They had an episode where they did that. Um, there's other older movies, incredible shrinking, you know, body things where they took a little submarine and went inside. Um, they had a Phineas and Ferb episode where they went inside Candace. You might remember that. So this is a common, right, kind of sci-fi type uh, scenario. Uh, the point for you is to prove that you understood those concepts from chapter one, two, and three. So look at your task here. Make a presentation to show your adventure. So there's five steps in your adventure, basically, right? You're going to shrink and inject your team into your body. Uh, you, whether that's, you know, that's your call, right? Is it in a little vehicle? Is it just as people and you're swimming around with scuba gear on? You know, whatever myth, this is the creative part. You can make it however you want to, as long as you're getting inside the body. Uh, step two, you're going to travel to a specific cell and get inside. Uh, three, you're going to dodge various organelles and you're going to go find the nucleus. So you can mention those organelles and things you see as you go by. Um, step four, you're going to find the DNA. So you're going to travel inside the cell, the nucleus and get to the DNA and you're going to change that nucleotide. So you'd identify, switch out the wrong nucleotide for the right one. And then step five, you're going to exit the cell and then exit the body and get back out again. So that's five steps. So you should have in this presentation at least five somethings. It could be pieces of paper where you draw uh, and you've taken pictures. It could be uh, five PowerPoint slides. Um, it could be more than five, but you're going to show those five steps of progress through, through your adventure here. Uh, so it's kind of like a comic book story in my head. It doesn't have to be drawn as a comic book. Uh, it doesn't have to be that method, uh, but that, that's kind of how I see it in my mind. And you may see it a little different way and have a different point of view for doing the presentation. You should have drawings. Now, this is not art class, so your drawings can be very basic stick figure type drawings, but they should be clear and show the information. You can write it from any point of view. So you could say from first person, I looked at the window of our submarine as we dove into the nucleus, right? Uh, or it could be third person, the scientists looked out the window. Uh, or it could be a dialogue. You could do it like comic book, you know, style kind of dialogue. And they have little bubbles and they say, oh my goodness, look what's out there. Um, uh, whatever version type you want to include your information in. So I say that you have any method to showcase the story, some possibilities. You could do a PowerPoint, 
right? You could find an app. They have apps that make comic book style things. Uh, you could draw it by hand on paper and take pictures, and that's fine too. Um, any method, you could do a big poster board, right? And chart the adventure through the body. Um, it, it's your call. It, I'm not as worried about the presentation type as much as I am the information, right? This is anatomy class, and the, what you're graded on the most is the content. Uh, so however works for you to feel your way through the presentation is okay. If you have a question and you're not sure, just ask. So how are you, um, uh, the anatomy information, it says you need at least 40 vocab words uh, in the presentation. And if you'll bold those, then that way I know which that you knew they were the vocab words for those chapters. And I'll be checking to make sure you've included those correctly. You know, you don't have to write definitions. You don't have to say, you know, the nucleus is the control center of the cell. You know, you don't have to write a definition, uh, but as you work and say, we're headed to the nucleus to find the DNA, you know, you bold those words and it shows me that you understood the concept. Now, I've got some questions here to kind of give you ideas about possible ways to include this information. So, chapter one, where are you going to enter the body? So, if you're going to be injected in, where? So you could choose your arm, right? And you could say your cubital region, right? Or you could uh, plunge a needle straight uh, into their thigh, right? And say the femoral region, right? You can use those regional terminologies. Then what direction are you traveling? We entered the body there and we traveled superiorly or we traveled medially or laterally, distal, right? Those direction words. Uh, we entered the abdominal cavity. We entered the cranial cavity. You see, you, you can incorporate some of those words from chapter one as you talk about where you're going. And that shows you understood the terminology, both for entering the body and then exit the body somewhere else and include some different words. And that will uh, incorporate that vocabulary for that chapter. Chapter two is all about molecules, right, and chemistry. So what do you see as you go by? Um, do you see a water molecule float by? Does your team test the conditions to make sure it's safe to go forward? You know, do you test the pH? Do you uh, notice there's a high level of carbohydrates? You know, just incorporating some of that terminology from chemistry uh, in chapter two. And then chapter three was about the cells, right? So as you enter a cell, what are you seeing as you enter the cell membrane? What are you going to have to pass through? Um, do you pass through a protein channel or are you passing in between the phospholipids? Um, your choice, right? How, how do you want the story to go? Um, what about the organelles you see? Uh, do you pass by a mitochondria? Do you accidentally mix them up and get stuck inside a Golgi apparatus in a vesicle? Uh, do you, does a lysosome attack you because it knows you're foreign and it's trying to clean up the cell? You know, you can have a couple sentences here and there uh, that incorporate those organelles. And then, of course, you get to the nucleus. You have to go in the nuclear pores. You have to find the DNA. Uh, the chromosomes and find uh, what does it look like. You talk about nucleotides. Um, so all those different things um, could get you up to that 40 vocabulary terms across the three chapters. Now, don't leave a chapter out. You don't have to have equal terms. You don't have to have, you know, 12 or 13 from each one. You can um, have more from one chapter and fewer from another. Just make sure you do represent all three chapters uh, in there. Now, grading is basically a lot of that vocab, right? It says 40 points for using those 40 vocab words. And then um, the rest of the points, you have 25 points for the story. So five points for each of those steps. So I should see a clear, you don't have to put step one, two, three, but I should see clearly the intro that you went, you know, into the body, that you got into the nucleus, that you exited the body, those five steps that were written above. Um, it can be fun. It can be pretty cut and dried. I know some of us are more creative than others. Uh, it can be a little more exciting. It can be a little more cut and dried, like a scientist report, you know, at the you know that they logged at the end of their mission. Um, or it could be more exciting. Uh, however, it works for you. It's that's not the point, right? The point is to show the information. Uh, and then 25 points for those same five steps for a drawing. Now, again, they should have color. They should clearly depict some of the action. They don't have to show every part. Um, 
But if you show a picture, maybe you draw a stick person getting an injection in the arm, that means your story better say you got injected in the arm, right? So make sure that your pictures match. Um, make sure that you try to be as reasonably depictive as possible. So if you're going, if you're drawing some of those organelles, they look like the organelles they're supposed to, right? Um, that shows that you understood the, the lab concepts of, of what uh, identifying organs within, identifying organelles within a cell. Um, they should have color, you know, just as best representation as you can. There should be at least five to match the five steps, but you can have more. Um, they don't have to show every single piece of information, but, you know, just like any illustrated book, right? They show some major part of the action that's going on. And then a last 10 points just for spelling, grammar, English mechanics. This should be written in sentence form, whether you're using dialogue or first or second, third person. Um, make sure you're writing incomplete sentences. Make sure that um, it makes sense. Make sure you're using proper English mechanics. Every gen ed class is supposed to um, uh, grade you on uh, having proper writing skills. Uh, as you move forward through your college career. So there'll be a just a one point deduction for each error uh, up to 10. So if you have more than 10, you won't get any additional points removed. But that's basically, you know, a letter grade for your English uh, and writing skills. I am most worried about the spelling and things on anatomy terms. Um, you know, that, that's very important. Spelling is super important in the medical field. One or two letter errors can, can cause medications to be given incorrectly, can mean the wrong patient gets an inf a medication or a diagnosis, and can lead to serious injury, death, uh, uh, across the board. And there's lots of examples of that, unfortunately, out there. So uh, spelling is, is really important when you're talking about learning these things for the medical field so we don't make those mistakes. So. All right, I hope that helps. If it doesn't, please email me. Email me specific questions. Email me if you have um, an idea, a draft, you know, and you want me to just kind of look at it. Now, you can't do that the hour before it's due, right? Um, but, you know, please give me some time to look at those and respond back to you. But uh, I hope that helps you kind of get an idea of what I'm looking for in these type projects. Again, they're very... Uh, loose directions because you have a very wide range of possibilities and it's up to you to incorporate all that information into a product to show how much you've learned over the course of these chapters. All right, thanks everybody. Email me if you have questions.